What's up, Gelfling Resistance, and welcome back to my 7 Things You Didn't Know About the 7 Gelfling Clan series. Today, we will be covering the Sifa. Number 1. Somadrin. Very similar to the way the Dusan live their lives, the Sifa also do not spend their existence in one large group under one banner, but countless other groups ranging in sizes and very unique. Numbering about six ships or fewer, these groups were called Samadrins, and each crew was like a family, living, sailing, trading, and existing together in perfect harmony, and all helmed by a strong, experienced leader who would guide their way and ensure the power of their crew, much like having their very own Madra. Number 2. The Wind in Your Sail there is a very important phrase used frequently and throughout Sifan history, known as Era Ainem. Taken from a Sifan proverb, these words mean, wind in the sail, and the meaning has literally everything to do with Sifan culture. The Sifa believed that the bond of family was not formed by blood relations, but by directionality, meaning that although we are all born of flesh and blood, the direction you take your life is far more important. As a result, this concept came to be accepted by the Madra, and throughout their lives, the Sifa have been adhering to this tradition by forming family out of friends, even with other Gelfling outside of their clan. Just as the proverb goes, care not what fabric makes your sails, but what wind fills them. Number 3. Sifan Far Dreamers Most of us know about Far Dreamers the mystics, fortune-tellers, and prophets of Thra. But Sifan Far Dreamers were the most gifted in the lands. These Far Dreamers were so important to their culture that ship courses and events were charted based solely on information provided by their emotions and feelings. In the waves, they could see visions. In the winds, they could hear thousands of voices. And when Thra spoke, they could listen and they could understand. And in return, when a Far Dreamer spoke, Thra could listen. Using collections of flame and wind-torched items such as herbs and charms called Yabo, the Sifa incorporated their two sacred elements, wind and fire, into all of their mystic methods, which blessed these Far Dreamers with Thra's essence, allowing them to foresee events and provide protection for their people. Number 4. The Huyum Races Every clan has a sigil animal, and the Sifa were very fond of a multicolored jewel-scaled fish known as the Huyum, which swam in schools of thousands just off the coast. Every trine, the Sifa would build special one-man ships which were in reality racing boats, only to be used for one specific purpose, competition. And so, when the Huyum began to swim along the shorelines, racers set out in groups of twelve each testing their skills through speed and agility, with many sailors and ships never making it past the rough seas and jagged rocks. But, if you should survive to claim the winner's title, you would be awarded with the winner's die, which is a spot of ink from the thumb of the Madra herself across your bow. This was one of the Sifa's proudest events, because as they say, to know one's ship is to know yourself. Number 5. Sifan Charms Every one of us is familiar with Sifan Charms. They are renowned throughout Thra, utilized and sold in almost every port in the land. But it is important to note why they are so valued and how deep the history goes. Instead of specific, highly prized materials, their charms were mostly made from items such as braided sailcloth, carved splinters, shells, scales, pieces of coral, and even small feathers in glass vials, all found along their beautiful coastlines. However, these charms are not made strictly for the purpose of trade or decoration. Each charm is actually a personal memento. For instance, there are three colors that represent Sifan directionality. Red for the past, purple for the present, and blue for the future and whichever way the charm is attached to these colors represents the specific memory and the timeline to which it is devoted. So, for positive events with friends, a charm would be hung high on a blue cord, but 
If the memory was sad, it would be hung low on a red cord, and oftentimes you could even see a mixture of all of these elements, signifying the endless, intertwined emotions of life. Number 6. The Day of the Rose Sun The Sifa were one of the Gelfling clans that celebrated a specific day of the sun, and their sun was the Rose Sun. The Rose Sun seemed to be important to the Sifa because of its reddish, fiery glow, and because the suns and moons are so crucial to their maritime schedules. On the day that marks the change of their coastal winds, the Sifa sail west, with most not returning until the winds change once again and representing this event is the Rose Sun, the entity which represents the winds, fire, and rebirth. To celebrate this day, many ships light candles which make their vessels appear as floating stars upon the ocean, and build lanterns that rise high into the sky before bursting into flames. Meanwhile, the children construct dolls from locks of their own hair, shaping them into the form of Gelfling to represent themselves. Upon completion, they are ceremoniously tossed into the ship's fires, opening the child's imagination to the idea of being reborn among the embers of the world. Number 7. The Constellations of Skeksa Acting as the only true Gelfling patron, Skeksa was the admired, feared, and respected queen of the Sifa clan. But the Sifa did much more than elevate her status. They actually created constellations in the sky to represent her many aspects. To help them guide the seas, the Sifa created these constellations in her likeness to help them navigate the dark waters. There is Vasfina, the behemoth, a low-lying star form in the south which represents Skeksa's massive dragon ship. And to the north is a bright configuration, in reality three stars in close formation, which is called the Mariner Star, with each star representing the three moons, to which the Sifa have grafted their own mythos onto. The blue moon representing Skeksa, the pearl moon representing the Sifa, and an unknown entity called San representing the hidden moon. This constellation is also an eternal indicator for true north, and just like Skeksa, has provided their guiding hand for countless trine. Well my friends, that's going to do it for the Sifa clan. Now it's time for you guys to leave all of your thoughts and opinions down below in the great white void. Tell me, what is your favorite aspect of the Sifa? As always, until next we meet, take care, for Thra, for Jim, and I'll see you guys back here for the next video very soon.